Alongside Brent Hubbs, I'm Austin Price for the VolQuest Stock Report. Brent, stock up for you this week. Stock up for me is going to be Theo Jackson. Uh, we had so many questions about the nickel position coming in and where would uh, the Nico Slaughter be in, in that competition. Maybe he was the better athlete. I thought Theo Jackson played fast, Austin, on Thursday night against Bowling Green. Career high in tackles. I thought he was active around the line of scrimmage. A couple PBUs, a couple tackles for loss. The challenges will get harder for him throughout the year. We all know that. Uh, but I thought he was a, a fast football player uh, on Thursday night. I think Willie Martinez has been very good for Theo Jackson, and I think he's a senior who's trying to have his best moments at this point, playing his best football. Stock up for me is going to be Darnell Wright. I, I thought he had one of his best games in orange. He's obviously got himself in much better shape. And uh, just, you know, I, I thought, you know, the fact that he didn't stand out for giving up sacks and, and those type of things. It was a great sign as he, you know, continues to mature as a football player. Um, I thought he had a really, really solid performance. So, you know, it's easy to go stock up Tyon Evans or Jabari Small. But I think, uh, you know, for me, stock up Darnell Wright, uh, you know, coming off the Bowling Green game, stock down for you. Stock down for me is just going to be the passing game in general. And, and obviously there's a lot of gnashing of the teeth of Joe Milton and Joe's got to play much better this week, or uh, Joe will end up being on the sideline watching. Cause I think Tennessee has got to do everything they can to win this game. And um, that the leash would, would be shorter for Joe, but that's not their plan. But obviously Joe's got to see the field better. He's got to play better. But I think as Josh Heupel said, Austin, it's the entire passing game. So I think you got to put the receivers in there as well. Uh, how do they handle press man coverage this week? So I just think for a, 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 a passing game that looked like it had a lot of rhythm in the preseason, kind of looked like a passing game that hadn't scrimmaged in a couple of weeks, got off to the quick start. And I think when Bowling Green made some adjustments, Austin, they just lost the rhythm and had a hard time getting it back. You know, you brought up the point about the fact that they hadn't scrimmaged the two weeks prior uh, to the to the Bowling Green game. You brought that up on, on Tennessee Prime on uh, – on Tuesday night as well. I think that's something that, you know, if, if Tennessee goes out and performs well, I think you'll look back and go, you know, they had to knock some rust off. They did that against Bowling Green, and they performed much better against Pittsburgh. At least that's what Vol fans are hoping. I'll agree with you. Stock down for me is going to be the passing game as well. And it's not all Joe Milton. It's receivers as well. Um, Got to catch the football. And uh, Jalen Hyatt, I, I think, knows that. He's going to be better, um, or at least he's planning to be better um, this week against Pitt. So, you know, wide receivers got to continue to get open. They got to catch the ball when it's thrown to them. And Joe Milton's got to hit them when they're open um, and see the field much better. So, collectively, the Tennessee passing game stuck stagnant for me will be Byron Young. Um, just because he's kind of stuck in neutral, he's stuck, in, you know, in the blocks. He can't get out of the blocks. And, uh, you know, as of uh, as of this taping, you know, he has still not been cleared by the NCAA to play against Pitt. At bare minimum, he'll be back next week for Tennessee Tech. But, uh, you know, all the kind of kind of hoopla and, and the excitement over him coming out of fall camp just kind of has dissolved with him being uh, out of commission for at least the first game and potentially this game as well. Stock stagnant for you. Well, first of all, on Byron, I just it's unfortunate for him. And, and obviously the NCAA is, you know, being the NCAA is not going to make a ruling until the last hour, probably late Friday <laughs> afternoon. You know, we went through this a year ago with Cade where – they had the plane on standby if he were to get an announcement on Friday, um, you know, of the South Carolina game to get things started. Last week, obviously, Byron got to go to the hotel and hang out. It just didn't work out for him. So it's really unfortunate for Byron that this is where it's at. And, and uh, as you mentioned, he'll be back for Tennessee Tech if he's not back this week. Stock stagnant for me. I'm going to go line of scrimmage. And I know that sounds kind of crazy because I thought both of those groups played well last week. I'm with you on Darnell Wright. I thought it was his best game. I thought overall the offensive line really did a nice job in the run game. Defensively, they played 11 guys. I just think the challenge is so much different this week, Austin. I don't think we know how good they are on the offensive line or the defensive line. I think we'll learn a lot more about both of those groups in the trenches this week against the Pitt Panthers. would be amazing if uh, Byron Young gets cleared right before kickoff, and it's like when Rory McIlroy needed that police escort to make it to the Ryder Cup a few years ago, and we had kind of aerial coverage. Let's call him Pete Michaels, get him on scene, and <laughs> – you know, you know, get, get, kind of get we've that, got the uh, we've got the motorcade coming down Neyland Drive right now. You, you, you you've got it up on the jumbotron. <laughs> would make for an interesting spectacle. We know it won't happen, but hey, one can dream. You know, gotta look for storylines and plots. You know, anytime uh, Tennessee's playing football, because well, this place has seen and done it all, but it's not done at a uh, overhead. Uh, you know, 
I don't want to say police chase because that's not right, but an overhead, uh, you know, caravan to the stadium. <laughs> it is not. And anything is possible. We all know that to be the case. That's the VolQuest stock report for Pittsburgh week. He's Brent Hubs. I'm Austin Price. <laughs>